and welcome back to another episode of the Realm of Unknown. I hope you guys are enjoying the strange time that we are currently in, uh, both the pandemic with uh, a lot of other issues and turmoil and just plain old, there's not even like a word to really describe what's going on right now fully, so I'm just going to leave it at, at just that, just undescribable. Um, but I do hope that you guys are all doing good, and that you're all staying safe and healthy, and, uh, that you're just getting through, honestly, is, uh, really how I can describe it, but I'm not gonna talk too much with this sort of stuff, because that's just not something that I do a lot, mainly because I can't really articulate things that well, and, uh, it just sort of flounders a lot of the time. Uh, but today I wanted to just mention that the the schedule for the podcast is going to be shifting a little bit in the near future. Not sure how, not sure fully how it's going to be changing um, because I have started a new position and it's sort of allocated a lot of my time. And with that, also trying to figure out stuff that's going on with everything happening uh, it's a weird time, and it's definitely hard to figure out certain things right now, and uh, we're working through it. But it's something I just wanted to preface real quick, starting off before we get into the topic of today's episode, and uh, just sort of keep you guys up to date. I'm a bit more vocal on stuff that's happening uh, over on Twitter right now, and if you do want to check that out with sort of how I'm sort of updating things and uh sort of handling stuff that's going on with the brand and myself and sort of the relation with you guys that's probably the best way to do so uh just as of right now might change again uh, it's a big sort of just unknown current time for i think everyone and uh myself included but moving on before we get into today's episode we will have a quick promo read and afterwards uh, we will get into the topic of today, that being Tessie the Lake Tahoe Monster. Hello, and welcome to Nothing Ever Happens in Canada, and I'm Canadian Girl. Do you like adventures, myths, legends, and learning about some of Canada's greatest moments in history? Well, then this is the podcast for you. Join me every two weeks as we travel around Canada, exploring things like mermaids, giants, lost gold mines, and we even stop once in a while to observe historical events and people. Come on over to the channel and join the crew by hitting that subscribe button today. You don't want to miss out on our next adventure. So have you ever been curious about the borders and the illustrated imagery that can be found on certain maps, particularly those that detail the sea or other bodies of water? Well, there is actually a reason, or at the very least a theory, as to why these cartographers chose to scrawl these notes down. A warning, so to speak, to anyone that is viewing the map that if you move upon this point, you will come in contact with monsters, frights, and the unknown. This same sort of logic can be applied to creatures such as Bigfoot or the Chupacabra and other so-called beasts that have been sort of dubbed into the cryptid zoology type field. And this is due to stories that show that we, in fact, do not know everything about the wild and about nature. And because of that, we sort of apply this level of mysticism to it. And in this episode, we shall be diving quite literally into one of these stories and locations that have to do with creatures and odd sightings. And this is being the shared California and Nevada lake known as Lake Tahoe. And the supposedly friendly and rather elusive creature that also calls its home. This lake, being the state's largest freshwater lake, has long been rumored to not only be the home of this unknown creature, but also supposedly a mass graveyard used by the mob for several years. 
it's definitely a unique location and something that is most certainly worth investigating. As the story goes with Lake Tahoe, a few years back, a fisherman trawling off the south shore got his hook caught onto something in the deep. When he finally freed it and reeled in his catch back to the boat, he found a well-preserved human ear caught on his hook. Other versions of the story have the fisherman snagging disembodied hands and other miscellaneous body parts, but ultimately this is how the story of the mass graveyard sort of began, and sort of one of the early stories that are attributed to Lake Tahoe, marking it as to what it is now. So according to the legend, the 900 foot deep waters of the south shore served as a dumping ground of sorts for the mob and their victims in between the years of 1920 to 1950s. Hundreds of gangster corpses are allegedly in the depths of the waters. They are supposedly preserved from decay and are prevented from surfacing due to the near freezing uh, waters of the lake. This supposed tale is so widespread, in fact, that it is known in the surrounding area to many local fishermen as, quote, the graveyard. In fact, if you are a fan of the movie The Godfather Part 2, or just the Godfather series, the Mafia boat execution scene that took place there actually occurred on Lake Tahoe. So, fun fact slash spoiler, I suppose. But even stranger than the mob dumping spot that this lake has come to be known as is the tale of Tessie, which arguably is more well known for this lake. Locals have been rather adamant that a large, unidentified, serpent-like creature lives in the deepest parts of the lake, and usually, appe- and usually appears around June during even-numbered years. So at the point in which uh, that I am recording this, you have a few more days until you, you could actually possibly see Tessie uh, for this year. That is until 2022 rolls around, if we're all still here. The creature has been dubbed Tessie in honor of the Loch Ness monster of the similar moniker, Nessie. The beast also allegedly appears, and I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this tribe, uh, but supposedly it appears in the Washoe Indian legends, and uh, it may have its first sightings dating back within uh, Western civilization into the early uh, 1900s, so... Natives in the region potentially have seen it much longer, but the first time that it has come in contact with Western science and civilization is not until about the 1800s, so just a little bit of a time period. Tessie made headlines for the first time in the San Francisco Chronicles on January 12, 1984, when the paper reported that two women had spotted the elusive lake creature earlier that month. Tahoe City residents Patsy McKay and Diane Stavrix were hiking above the west shore when they spotted the creature swimming in the lake. McKay said that the beast was about 17 feet long, she watched it closely and saw it surface three separate times, and she is described as calling this sort of action, the surfacing action, to it being similar to a law lo- uh, of to it being similar to that of a little submarine coming back up to the surface. Her companion, Diane, the second woman on the scene, stated that the creature had a humped back and it seemed to surface like a whale. However, she is also adamant that it was not a human diver, a log, or simply large ripples in the water. She was enough, she was able to see it enough to cognitively identify it as not those things. Two years earlier to this supposed sightings, uh, a pair of off-duty Reno policemen also had their own encounter with Tessie. Officers Chris Beeb and Jerry Jones were water skiing in the lake on June 1982, when the unusually large creature swam by them before quickly submerging once again. There are more stories relating to the lake as a whole, which asserts that there is a large underground river system that connects the lake to that of Pyramid Lake over in Nevada. Apparently, bodies of people who have drowned in Tahoe have surfaced in uh, in Pyramid Lake 
about 50 miles to the north. However, this phenomena that people believe could be a reason why Tessie isn't spotted as often, uh, this phenomena of corpses sort of popping up in both locations could also be due to the bodies floating over the North Tahoe spillway, which does enter into the Truckee River and then in turn moves downstream and enters into Pyramid Lake. So there is a connection between the two lakes, whether or not there's a vast underground water system that's up in the air, but there is possibly some explanation for the phenomena that these bodies are people are linking to it, it's weird people are sort of drawing as straws there but uh at the very least it's an explanation as to why the creature may not have been spotted and it should be mentioned that the closest anyone has come to figuring out the sort of mysteries of the bottom of lake tahoe occurred in the mid 1970s when famed oceanographer jacques cousteau brought a small submarine to the lake and he did several dives during this period to the bottom of the lake floor, sort of searching for the absolute sort of peak of the bottom. And uh, when he returned to the surface, however, he allegedly stated, the world is not ready for what is down there. And to his death, he refused to release any photos or data when it comes to the expedition. I'm not entirely sure how accurate this is, but from what I can sort of gleam, this is sort of in the correct wheelhouse. It is obvious to point out, though, that because of this sort of veil of mystery, people sort of speculated and went all over the place as to what he possibly saw at the bottom of the lake. These theories go anywhere from, again, the graveyard explanation of there just being a collection of bodies down there, to possibly be a group of Tessie-like creatures that may call the lake bottom their home. So when it comes to explaining, however, these Tessie sightings and phenomena, Charles R. Goldman actually comes forward with his own explanation. And Goldman is a leading expert when it comes to Lake Tahoe, and he has a hunch as to what Tessie might actually be. He believes that there is a type of fish that on record has grown to be the size of 1500 pounds that may have possibly crept into Lake Tahoe during the migration or planting of trouts or mackinaws, which is actually an explanation that a lot of local uh, storefronts on the lake also sort of tout. So Goldman believes that the creature responsible for the Tessie sightings is none other than the rather common sturgeon which, if you guys are aware of the Nessie story and other lake and river creatures, the sturgeon should be familiar. So, for those who aren't, however, the sturgeon is a rather common freshwater fish, I believe fully freshwater, uh, but there are dozens and dozens of species of them across the globe. They are rather common again. And the fish, depending on the type of species, can reach lengths of up to 12 feet, which is insane. And, again, it could be 1,500 pounds, it's massive. They are found pretty much all over the globe, and particularly throughout the United States and North America. And yes, they are in fact found in rivers and freshwater bodies in California. So, it is very much possible that one or a few got into Lake Tahoe and sort of made their own little colony. Again, there are lakes and waterfronts that connect to the Tahoe Lake, and... It's possible. It, it's fully possible. There are also, again, certain species of trout that live in there. They are not as big, but they can get to around four to five feet, which is still rather large if you are not expecting a fish of that size to be near you. And this is sort of an explanation that professionals such as professors, researchers, and many within the scientific community have sort of reason when it comes to cryptids and uh sort of how we began to cope with the uncertainty of the natural world that we find ourselves in. Sometimes these mythical creatures that we sort of attribute these sightings to, uh, they could very easily come from a creature of fiction. A great, great example, if we're sticking onto the sort of water creature theming, the giant squid. It was 
beforehand thought to be an explanation for mermen, or more commonly, the mythical kraken. The sea creature, however, was only proven to be real after a fisherman managed to hook a dead carcass of one. Since then, we have found more body parts, and I'm not sure if we have actually captured a live specimen. However, we do know that they now exist, and on top of that, we also have the colossal squid, which is equally as massive as the giant squid. So, it's possible that all of these weird sightings that people are having of this strange creature in this lake, particularly Lake, La- lake Tahoe, but lakes and bodies of water all over the world, they could just easily be seeing specimens and fish that they don't commonly know of. I didn't know about sturgeons for several, several years. I, you Until I became like a late teen, early adult, I didn't know what a sturgeon was. I didn't know that they lived in fresh water. And I certainly did not know that they grew up to be 12 feet long or possibly larger. That was not something that's just common knowledge. So if unless you live in the area and knew of the wildlife and game, I can understand why certain residents who maybe new, maybe not part of that sort of community, who might just visit the lake every now and then, or might just have relatives in the area, I can see as to why they would be spooked if a, even a carp, uh, or not a carp, a trout, uh, that is around four feet long, just happened to brush on by or breach slightly, that would freak you out. And in turn, you would sort of phantom, or you would sort of put it to a higher regard because you were scared and all that sort of stuff. Um, It's definitely something that is rather common, and uh, it's something that is intriguing when it comes to these particular lakeside and riverside monster type stories. Um, I don't think a lot of people take the Tessie story very seriously, particularly since the local area has sort of turned it into a mascot of sorts, and that sort of since a lot of the area sort of seems to know what's going on, uh, I sort of lean towards the idea that they just are playing up the story. They don't fully believe that it's there, but at the same time, you know, if it is, you know, it's more tourist attraction. So either way, it's a win-win for them. So it's definitely interesting, and it's definitely was a fun topic to look into because it's essentially Nessie here in the United States. But if you guys have any more stories or weird monsters or cryptids or creatures that your local area might have, definitely be sure to reach out and let me know. I would love to look into them and possibly make them the topic for a future episode. And if you did enjoy, please, please, please be sure to leave a review or a comment or whatever it is, however you're viewing this. It means a lot and in a lot of ways that sort of feedback is amazing. Right now, it's definitely a weird financial time, so I know people are not able to support as much as they think they can, but again, those reviews really, really go a long way. Uh, But if you do want to check out the Patreon, we do have one. There is a $1, $5, and $3 tier, and if you do just want to go there and be part of the community, we have a lot of free content and discussions, articles, and behind-the-scenes stuff that you can go and enjoy. Otherwise, be sure to check us out over on Twitter and Instagram. Again, Twitter more so. I'm not sure how I'm going to keep Instagram going. But if you do want to check it out, it's there for you. But definitely definitely check me out on Twitter, especially if you want to have some discussions back and forth, that sort of stuff. That's definitely the main location that you're going to find me at and the main place that I'm going to be posting updates and sort of things that are happening with whether it's you know, current events or with this podcast in general, that's where you're going to find it. So until then, I hope you guys enjoy and I hope to see you guys in the next week episode. But until then, be sure to stay spooky.